Hello, how are you? I'm so glad to see you here. Welcome at How to Web Conference 2015. I am Gabriela, and for the next two days, I will be your host on uh, on Startup Stage. Um, we um, we have so many things um, ready for the, uh, for you. For those who who don't know, Startup Spotlight is uh, a competition and mentoring program uh, organized along with How to Web Conference for the uh, most promising uh, tech uh, startups in the CE. Uh, besides the pitching sessions, we uh, have um, some inspiring talks and uh, interesting panel discussions uh, for you. So I hope you, you will enjoy it. Uh, I'd like to get this day uh, started and invite on stage Georgia Ditsa, uh, Startup Spotlight uh, Program Manager. So let's give it up for Georgia. Hey. Um, hi, guys. Um, is this thing on? Uh, OK, uh, great. So I like it because uh, we're in a more like cozy environment now, not that big stage uh, that you saw me. We're going to have a round of four pitches. Uh, after that, we're going to have a panel and then another four pitches. So you're going to see a lot of me. Um, uh, I would like first to thank and present the jury that are going to grade the four startups that are going to see in this uh, in these 30 minutes. So uh, thank you, Cosmino Kishore, Business Development Manager at Hubraum. Thank you, Cosmin. Uh, Robert Knapp, founder of CyberGhost and uh, a longtime partner of uh, How to Web. Thank you, Robert. Alan Clayton, business coach and roaming mentor at SOS Venture. And Malin Jan Stefanescu, a very active angel investor. Thank you. <laughs> uh, he has fans. Um, OK, so uh, without further ado, I'm just going to invite the first uh, startup on stage to pitch Seeds Unified. Victor? getting cut out of the uh, out of the industry from this pretty large chunk um, that is 433 billion a year and they're threatened with extinction the more products you can buy online the more you can get your insurance online the uh, brokers are uh, threatened and they need to diversify the only way to survive the only way to ensure things such as insuring a pen like this one is to diversify they need to make custom insurance. And they need to automate it to focus a lot on sales. And this is the weapon of choice. This is the only way they're going to survive. And they need to automate that entire process. The norm is slow. If I'm going to automate this, if I'm going to make a form online that is going to take you end to end from collecting the data needed to insure you all the way to generating the documents, make you pay for it, and insure you in like five minutes, the way you get your car insurance online, you need to go through a third party developer. Only custom software will do that. And you get a lot of billable hours. You get a lot of emails and meetings and you get per product for each of this. If I want to ensure that camera, if I want to ensure this chair, I'm going to have to do another product and another product. How do we know this? I'm part of the problem. I've been building such products for the past eight years for insurance brokers and for market research companies doing highly complex forms. And it's a lot of experience put in, in that place. And that gave me an idea. How about removing that developer? How about automating the process so that the insurance broker can build the product to sell this by himself, automate it by himself, and deliver faster to the market? What if they could do all the complex logic in beautiful blocks? They can just read. 
What if they can define that logic, all the process by themselves? No longer ring that developer and say, listen, I need you to put Paula uh, whenever the terms of services are agreed. She needs to get an email to be notified. What if they can do this themselves, empower them? And you get smart surveys. That's the end result. You get surveys that deliver complex results without any developer skills in the mix. And you get rapid time to market, which they need to have. They need to put out 10 products, see whichever sticks. They need to do this fast and not genuinely pay a special premium on each. And they save money at the end of the day. You want the rapid iterations. You want to be able to survive this way. It's the only way they're going to go. And how do we know about the competition? You know, how do we know where we fit? You have either just collecting data all the way to software development. You have the big guys doing software development. Collecting data. Survey monkey, right? Everybody here has used it, right? Raise your hands if one of you hasn't used it. Thank you so much. So on the other hand, you have Zoho Creator, which literally asks you, um, be a developer. Build your product and be a developer. And Seeds comes right in the middle. You get the simplicity of SurveyMonkey, yet the complexity of Zoho Creator. You can automate your business now. You can start selling within a week. You have the documents, you use your own things, and within a week, you have a product. Let's make it clear, the norm is months over six. We have already paying customers on a monthly subscription. And this product was sold before writing the first line of code. I can't be you know, less you know, proud of this. I'm sold before writing the first line of code. It was a great advantage. Because now it pays for itself. It's 10% per annum. And it always gets you that time down. Our customers are getting from 65 minutes to 7 minutes with getting one insurance done once the process is completely automated. And here's the beautiful part. Seeds has been in production for the past year, and we've been growing to 64 million collected answers to date, and it's going to continue to grow all the way over 70 million. Closing remark, please. Um, guys, this is a product that will change the industry, if we're going to talk just about insurance alone. I thank you very much for your time. I'm looking forward to meeting uh, all of you guys and discussing and seeing where we can go forward from that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions? Great, thanks. Um, yeah, so how international is this? Um, the customers are in Romania, Moldavia, and Ireland. Right, but in terms of the future, what you're developing is a platform that could be used anywhere in the world. Yes, it's a software as a service. Okay, yes. cool. And what is the revenue that you have to date? You mentioned you have some. Uh, with four customers, 1,350 euro per month recurring, excluding the additional stuff that, you know, like every now and then they have special demands. Cool, thanks. And the, the customers are the brokers who are right now reselling uh, uh, insurances? Yes. And they will do the same, but by using your software? Exactly, yes. They will automate that process and sell. OK, but you started your pitch with the fact that this industry is dying. So why would you produce now a tool for a dying industry? <laughs> <laughs> it's threatened. It's not dying. Because it is threatened, that creates the opportunity. They need to diversify. And they're doing that already with uh, custom software development. But this way, with seeds, instead of going to the software developer, they can go to us. And they just automate a pretty lengthy process. Thank you, Victor. Thank you so much. Uh, the next startup is uh, is a is, is a big one. Uh, it's uh, it's different from what we usually have. They they have a large team. They uh, they came very far and they do uh, hardware and software. So I invite Onyx Beacons to take the stage. Thank you. Um, hello, I am Marius Morna and I'm the CTO of Onyx Beacons. Uh, first off, I would like to just tell you a couple of words about what a beacon is. Um, it's just a very dumb device that you stick on a wall. It broadcasts using Bluetooth low energy, and it triggers a notification on a phone. So the typical use case that everybody imagines whenever they see a beacon is retail. So you do proximity marketing, you do loyalty programs in large retail chains. Uh, we've had some such deployments like Carrefour in Romania, 
They used it for in-store navigation uh, and loyalty programs. Um, but you can use beacons for more than that. One of our proudest projects is Smart Public Transport, which helps visually impaired people uh, identify which bus pulls over in the station. Uh, we have a deployment in Bucharest of 500 beacons. Um, Another uh, use case that's gaining a lot of traction is hospitality, where hotels or, for example, this cruise ship from Norway is trying to get uh, customers to leave their cabins and engage with the entertainment area. Um, you can have events and conferences like this one using beacons. This is a picture from IBM's biggest um, uh, conference. They always end up with a bang, like an Aerosmith concert. Um, but you could use it for building and facility management. Like a huge market is a Rocket Software is building an indoor positioning system using beacons to augment GPS indoor and have the, the level of accuracy needed for um, uh, real-time navigation and uh, uh, wayfinder. Uh, you can even use it in industrial process efficiencies. And the list goes on. So. Because I showed you part of what we are doing, I want to talk about who we are and a short history. We started right after uh, Apple announced iBeacons, iBeacon protocol, in 2013. And we incorporated and started selling our first beacon. And then focused on creating a cloud-based CMS and a beacon management platform. Uh, we are kind of like this hardware producer turning software company. But at our core, we are a software company. Um, right now, we are a team of 25. We were just four a year ago. Um, and our leadership is comprised of people who know how to fail. For example, Bogdan Oros, who is one of our co-founders, has just uh, recovered from failing with another startup. Uh, I have some en enterprise experience, and uh, another one of our co-founders has a successful product in the market for the past 10 years. Uh, our advisor, Leon Katzenslund from IBM, is very good at understanding enterprise and emerging technologies. And we have a seed investment from um, uh, some awesome guys who uh, sold companies in the navigation space. Um, our product line is made out of hardware offering, software offering. And the hardware offering, here you can see we have basic beacons, then enterprise beacons, and then specialized beacons like keychain beacons or central beacons that can manage on the floor beacons. Uh, then we have a mobile middleware that just is an SDK you put in the mobile phone that enables it to use beacons. Uh, and we've built some extension libraries like Wayfinder and Asset Tracking, which are specialized modules that allow you to use it in specific use cases. Um, and this is how our cloud solution looks like. This is just a small example of having analytics of what the users do on the floor, uh, having a conversion funnel for the content that you're sending through the solution, and using all that to tweak your content strategy to better engage your audience. Um, so where are we right now? Well, our core strategy is building partnerships. So we've partnered up with around 30 resellers in over 80 countries. They are already getting their own customers, like around 300 for, uh, 350 customers. And we have uh, niche partners in at least four, with four market leaders and five global companies. Um, one of our achievements right now is that we have an 150k install base and we're targeting one, one million uh, people so we can then uh, partner up with ad networks for uh, online to offline uh, advertising. But um, the question is, is the market uh, big enough? And those are the numbers. There will be around a quarter of a billion devices in the next five years. And those are the people who are supporting this market. Thank you. Any questions? You just talk because it picks up. I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't understand um, the the slide with the uh, customers and resellers and uh, market and numbers. So uh, you can you explain that again? So. Who is, who is your customer? The so being an emerging industry, there's 
a lot of noise and a lot of hype, but very few actual deployments. And those uh, actual deployments act depend on several players. For example, uh, in retail, you're, you're uh, uh, relying on the engaging experience that the marketers create to the platform. So because of that, we are trying to find as many niches where this technology fits easier than, than general purpose marketing. And in those niches, you, you need to either acquire uh, product know-how and market know-how in those niches, or you partner up. The easier thing for us as a platform as a, and as a technology provider is to use what we know best and create the technology and apply it and partner up with people who have business knowledge. That's why our main, main goal and go, main strategy is creating flexible business models and creating partnerships with big players in different niches. For example, the, the, uh, the cruise ship that I showed you, that we, are, we partner up with uh, um, a company that has monopoly over ship communications in the Nordics. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, do you have an example of a deployment that you've done to date that actually generated a measurable business benefit for somebody? Short um, answer, please. Sorry? Short answer. Yes. Um, the simplest one right now is still retail and Carrefour because you can measure engagement. But the real, real value comes, for example, from other industries. Asset tracking, we have a deployment in asset tracking when it, where licensing comes a lot easier. It's like you just repl you create value by, by replacing a technology that doesn't work with a technology that works. And we have a couple of warehousing examples where, where it's a great value. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, um, I know if many of you know, but um, esports is becoming a, a big thing. Uh, I used to play professional Counter-Strike. Now I don't have time anymore, but I do watch people playing. Uh, so that's why I'm very excited to uh, Introduce <laughs> game GIF. <laughs> yeah, so can you hear me? Yeah, okay, so now it's time for some entertainment. Um, okay, so I'm Sebastian and I'm here to give you a taste of game GIF, a new way of discovering mobile games through short video content. Um, so I'll start with some numbers. Uh, the first one is the number of days that the, the co-founders have been working together on different tech startups. And 11 million is the number of gameplays our CEO had for the games he built previously. And um, basically, this is uh, the team. Uh, Manu is the CEO, passionate game developer and gamer who was an entrepreneur, and he's an entrepreneur, well, he was an entrepreneur all his life. Me, the CMO, working in marketing and advertising for big companies, then switched to, uh, to startups. And uh, Dragos, passionate uh, software developer, has worked for uh, startups as well, but also for big companies such as Bitdefender. And four months ago, we set up to use our skills and experience to solve a big problem in the gaming community and that's game discovery. And let's face it, game discovery is broken for both gamers and developers, and that breaks our hearts, actually. Uh, and we're not the only ones out there saying this. Um, and actually, the real question is, how broken is game discovery? And uh, if we look at gamers, the main way they discover games in the app stores is through, uh, through general browsing. And this means that each and every time uh, they go in, a, in an app store, they have to think of a keyword and type it in, browse name and logos, then look at screenshots, read descriptions, review, and all of this just to discover if a game, to see if a game is actually, is actually worth downloading or not. No wonder that only one in 100 developers consider themselves financially successful. There has to be a better way, an easier way, and that's GameGIF the first video-only app store for mobile games. It's, we see it as Vine for mobile game discovery. A mobile app showing 10-second video trailers of mobile games with actual gameplay, so users can get a quick feel of what a game is all about and decide to skip it or, or install it. Uh, at this point, where we have an MVP, 
uh, we're putting interviews, we've tested it uh, with 150 users from Indonesia and Philippines, and we have uh, positive results. Uh, at this point, uh, we upload the content ourselves uh, to skip the chicken and egg problem, so we don't need, we don't need the, the developers to come in at this stage. We're only looking uh, for gamers. And we're operating in a big and growing market where 8.7 million developers make games for 1.5 billion gamers. Uh, we spent 21 billion the last year on mobile games and they're going to spend 28 the next one. And we consider Google Play and Apple actually as uh, distribution partners actual, than actual competitors. Our competitors are alternative app stores, but we're different. We're unique because we're uh, because we're showing only only video content. Also, we're user curated, so the apps that get popular are uh, are in the hand in the hands of actual users. And also, we're only about games, not the other like the other app stores. And also, yeah, actually, we're riding a shift we see in the market uh, to short video content led by Snapchat and Vine, but actually, we're bringing it to the gaming industry. In terms of monetization, yeah, we, we, we will allow developers to, to promote their games within, within the platform, rising ranks, and also take a cut, affiliate cut um, through the Android, uh, Android apps that get directly uploaded to our platform. Also, a cut from... Uh, from linking for to iOS apps. And yes, we know that marketplaces are a hard nut to crack. That's why we're looking for people that can help us, mentors and investors that have experience in gaming and marketplaces, and also people that can connect us to possible partners with databases of at least 10,000 game developers or 100,000 gamers. So uh, if you can help in any way, please get in touch, or if you just love the idea, please email me and I'd love to chat with you. Thanks. <laughs> I'll say. Any questions? Uh, you show some figures at a certain point in time, I mean like 5% from Apple or something like yeah, that. So yeah. who you are charging actually, game developers or the marketplaces? Did, did, that, was, uh, that thing was checked? I mean, do you think that Apple is gonna pay you? Uh, it's it's a referral program from okay. from Apple. It's just yeah. a referral. Oh, it's a referral okay. program, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, you said you <coughs> tested it and had positive feedback. What does positive feedback mean? Well, with a prototype having one just one minute of content, basically uh, fifteen gifs, video gifs in it, we've seen uh, we've seen thirty percent of of the users coming in randomly having. Uh, installing at least at least one game and also coming in 20% of them coming in the next day even though there was just so few content so uh, we feel that that's positive uh, positive uh, results at this point and you would distribute the application also through the app stores yeah your application uh, at first yeah but that's this what one I couldn't consider would be your chicken and egg problem you know because people should find your application too you know <laughs> well everybody so how would you solve that well uh, we're we're making we're making sharing at the heart of the product, so we uh, will get will get the attention of gamers through sharing in in social networks, and uh, that's that's our main our main strategy for that at, the, at this moment. So I guess um, as you say, the reason that it's dead is because lots of people have tried to do this before. So you have competitors now. Do you want to say something about the competition? Uh, in terms Your of competition. We consider alternative app stores as, as our main competition, uh, but yeah, they're like uh, in the in the PC world, uh, Steam. Uh, Steam well, lots is of other people have tried to make game discovery easy. Yeah, yeah, but and yeah, and what you set up to now is they've all failed. Uh, <laughs> not really. They have had moderate success, I would say, and uh, uh, in terms of um, in terms of like the alternative app stores, yeah, they're. They're making an alternative way to find games, but it's the same way. They, they're using the same way. They use the, they show the same content, like screenshots, descriptions, and everything. We believe that if in gaming you want to see the actual gameplay, so we want to be the number one place where you you think of looking when you want to discover a new a new game. That's that's the whole idea, and we believe these guys are actually missing the point and the Thank shift. You. Thank you. <laughs> to video content. Thanks. <laughs> Okay. Um, 
So now we're going to have the last pitch from this batch, and then we're going to do a very interesting panel, and then again some more pitches. So to uh, close this round of pitches, I invite Catwalk 15. Okay. Hi, I'm Mark, founder and CEO of Catwalk 15. I'm a millennial. Millennials are the largest generation on Earth with 2.5 billion people. That's one third of the world's population. And every year, uh, the clicker's not work. Uh, every year we spend $600 billion and 40% goes on clothes and accessories. 40%. We spend twice as much on fashion than we do on food. It's insane, but for us, fashion is a way of life. Every day we struggle with making decisions on what to wear because we need confirmation and validation from our peers. We need help. We need guidance. So we turned to Facebook, Instagram, and every other social platform available out there. But they were not really built for this. They're pretty much useless. We then text our friends and, oh my god, what a joy that is. They are either unavailable, too polite to provide an honest answer, or simply not fashionable enough to be of any real help. It's, it's horrible. We are here to completely change all this. Introducing Catwalk 15. Instant fashion advice, anytime, anywhere. All you have to do is upload an image of your outfit and ask a question. The community helps you by providing feedback. They can add comments, offer suggestions, and you get instant results. Now, if those results are not perfect for a tech demo day, you can simply try out another outfit. Let's say a black t-shirt with a logo on it and maybe sunglasses. Yeah, let's try that. Much better. Instant fashion advice, anytime, anywhere. We launched a beta version to test this concept. The community quickly grew to 4,000 users and they have asked for advice on over 16,000 outfits. Now, the high level of engagement we've seen from our users is really amazing and shows the enormous potential of what we're building here. Our 4,000 users have already exchanged over 750,000 opinions through Catwalk 15. We're growing at an average rate of 10 to 15% month over month, and we managed to double our user base since our graduation from the How to Web MVP Academy earlier this summer. Now, all of this is happening at a very opportune moment. The market for mobile advertising reached $31 billion. That's almost double than the year before. Now, when a user sees an outfit they like on Catwalk 15, they can just tap the image and discover where they can shop similar items. We then retain a commission from each sale. As I said, we target millennials. 72% of millennials follow fashion bloggers. So right now we offer the app as a tool for bloggers to better interact with their readers and in return they act as our brand ambassadors. We already have bloggers from Romania, Bulgaria, France, Germany, the Czech Republic and the UK. And we also have a great team. No, really, we, we do have a great team. Just, uh, I'm unable to show it. You liar. You have no slider, do you? <laughs> no, it's just the slim, same slide I keep clicking, so. No problem. For the last five years, I was in charge of business and product development at the web agency, and I co-founded two other startups. My CTO co-founded several companies, one of which received an investment of over $15 million, and then one, another one has a recurring uh, annual revenue of over $5 million. Our fashion advisor, Alina, is an award-winning fashion blogger. She was recently named Blogger of the Year by Fashion TV and won People's Choice Award three years in a row. The rest of our development team has experience working in companies such as Gameloft, EA Sports, Grappy Systems, and Emerson. We are now focusing on user acquisition. We are looking to raise a seed round and we are searching for fashion bloggers in key European countries. If you can help us in this aspect, please let's have a talk after the presentation. Now, does this look good on me? Well, it's a question we've been asking ourselves for thousands of years. Today, with Catalog 15, we finally have an answer. I apologize for the delay. My name is Mark and I thank you for having me here. Enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you. Questions? Uh, so you said you focus now on user acquisition. 
how is the retention rate? <clears throat> how often is the product used? So do the people come back? You said you grow, but growth can be, you know. Okay. We have three types of users. Users that post outfits and ask for advice. Users that interact with that uh, content and give advice. And then users who just browse the app for inspiration. And we have an average retention rate of 30% first day, 20% seventh day, and 10% uh, 28th uh, day. And we are looking to build uh, to building a following system that will allow you to personalize your feed in order to further invite your friends and follow fashion bloggers whose style you identify with. Okay, so so people people stay in the service now for 30 days, and then the retention is under 10 percent. Uh, yes. So engagement is okay. Well, those are the averages we've seen so far, and we are still building uh, features that will help increase uh, yeah. retention. But in, in, instead of focusing on you know user acquisition, maybe we should well, solve that. You, you really can't do one without the other, so we need new users in order to yeah. test new things. So it's an ongoing process and we iterate very fast. Um, I think you said that you, the way you make money is by commission on sales. That's the easiest uh, revenue stream we can implement. We can right. deploy it in uh, two to four months from, uh, from now. Basically, it's a mix between um, affiliate marketing and advertising. We, it's focused on native advertising, and blog, uh, this is the industry standard in fashion. So uh, retailers and brands have budgets for these types of campaigns, and then users are used to seeing these types of campaigns and reacting to them. And uh, um, in 2014, there was, in, just in Romania alone, $1.5 million were spent by retailers and bloggers on these types of campaigns. And this is only Romania, so imagine in the UK or Germany or the US. Okay, so okay. Thank, thank you. you. Like I said, you're going to see a lot of me today. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, the pitches.